What's up, everybody? Today we're going to do If It Teases the Court, and I normally wouldn't do something like this on one single release, but I think there's enough to discuss here conceptually, if not specifically, about this product to kind of make it worthwhile. So we're going to talk about the product, and then we're going to kind of talk about what this could mean, because I think it has more exciting ramifications than many of us initially realize. So I'm a little unclear on the company, but it looks to me as though either this figure is called Big Firebird, or the company is called Big Firebird, or the company is called Cultural Media Company Limited. Not sure. And far from an expert, but they've put up some teases of an RC figure that they have coming out. And since we just talked about RC recently, I figured it was apt. But this is going to be an extremely stylized RC. Kind of like an anime approach to the figure, or character rather. And I gotta say, I like it. Now, that doesn't mean that I'll be buying it. I don't know if it has a place for my collection, and I'm not a huge RC fan. She's fine. Part of the team and a necessary component and all that, but I don't necessarily feel the need to buy multiple iterations of her or anything along those lines. So let's talk about the teases. They put up one with her chest front and center. Seems to be a popular topic these days. But she is covered up. There's no human flesh. A lot of sharp angles. A lot of line work. Relative to the overall aesthetic. There's also a more human look to her mouth and nose, I feel like, than what a lot of other companies do or a lot of other renditions of the character do. We see her alt mode, which once again is definitely in the spirit of RC. I think it's instantly recognizable as RC, the overall shape and then the fin on the back. You can see the leg joints, so I'm left to assume it does transform. But once again, liberties are taken. All of the aerodynamic fins and such, the layers in the front hood and all those sorts of design elements do differentiate it. I also love the seats. Like it looks like they took a lot of care in design. Like it looks like somebody could really sit in there and I dig that as well. And then we kind of get the biggest look of her, so to speak, with an extreme upward angle. She obviously parts forms with the front becoming a shield, which I'm a-okay with, doesn't bother me in the least. And we get an idea of her sort of overall design aesthetic. And it appeals to me. Now, like we were talking about earlier this week, this does feel more like the Bishojo reimagining of this character for a specific design aesthetic. And I'm on board with that. I love a lot of the design cues here. I love the pistons in the knees. The fingers look wicked too. I'm hoping they're swappable hands, but we'll see. Then we get a few animations uh, with the keep out caution. I don't, I don't know what they're trying to get at there. I'm not going to try to read too f- far into it. I don't think it ultimately matters. She's obviously blushing already. But this does seem to have like a manga anime vibe to it, and I'm not opposed to it. And then we get sort of the drawing layouts of the character, which gives us kind of the most information. And we see that she's going to have a blaster that she can keep in a hip holster that can be revealed by manipulating pieces. And she comes with a sword. And the only thing that I find relatively unsightly are the hip flaps. But I think they kind of work for the design of the figure. So I'm not mad at them. And I also wonder if they can pop off on a ball peg or something. And then we get the view from the back, which is pretty clean. Once again, with the hips kind of being the only thing that are problematic. The flaps, rather. I also like how like the elbow joints and the knee joints and all that stuff look like tires. Now, obviously, they're not the real tires of the car. But I just dig that, once again, conceptually. And then they just recently put up a final image, and I'm using the term final loosely, obviously, that perhaps doesn't have the same taste or class as some of their other images, but they want to make sure that you know that you will come fully equipped with sculpted butt cheeks. And if that is of importance to you, you can rest assured they have taken that into account and have done everything in their power to make you happy. Also, while I have your ear, If you go to www.google.com, you should with much ease be able to find a therapist that can help you along in your journey of life to maneuver any issues that you may or may not have. No judgment here. Just putting it out there as something that is possible. It is a tool available to you. There's no shame in it. Feel free to reach out and get some help. Even Tony Soprano took a moment for himself. So tougher guys than you have had to break down and and talk to somebody. And if sculpted robot butt cheeks is something that you've just been waiting for your entire life, you know, no judgments here, but take a look around. 
Now that brings us to the end of our conversation in regards to the reveals, but there's a lot more to talk about here, which is the only reason why I'm doing this video in the first place. There's not quite enough meat on this bone to just do a whole video, but there is enough meat when we talk about concept and the need for concepts to change because the lines that we are collecting, a lot of them are coming to an end. So what does this mean for the Transformers fan? We've been pretty spoiled in the past with getting most things that we want, but now it might be time to start thinking out the box, and it's pretty exciting where that thinking can lead if you allow it to. Because the G1 Masterpiece, which I know many of you are a fan of, as I am, is coming to an end, and realistically, we might need to assume that there are certain characters that we may not ever get. Once again, I'm looking at you, Fangry. Dude, the day they do a Fangry, we're going to do a whole week's worth of videos about it. I feel like he's earned it at this point. And concept here to me is key. We've spoken many times on this channel how the well is running dry. And while this stuff doesn't appeal to me in the sense of purchasing the figure, it does appeal to me conceptually. And what I mean by that is I've kind of mapped out the space in my display where I'm going to display my affection for Transformers. Now, that allows for a few extra pieces to sort of reiterate or show love or an homage to a character in a different space. For instance, that Hot Toys Prime has been calling my name recently. But I know that a lot of people that watch my channel from reading the comments and such pretty much collect exclusively Transformers. And for those people, I think it does offer an interesting route of travel in terms of the collection, in terms of displays. There are a lot of RC fans. She is really the only female character. I know there are others, but they don't have the fanfare that she has. And I can see a whole RC display for somebody who is really enthusiastic about the character, especially with a unique design like this. But what is this? This is a character with obvious G1 nods, completely reimagined for a different aesthetic. Perhaps anime, perhaps Gundam. But what could that mean? Think about it in a broader scale and try not to put blinders on to get tunnel vision in terms of how you view Transformers collecting-wise. Think about how DX9 has been doing this Beast Wars mechanic looking line. Almost to say, what if Beast Wars was in G1? What if this was in Gundam or some other anime that only my buddy Joe knows in my circle of friends? But let's explore that further. What would Quintessons look like in IDW? What would Tarn look like in Beast Wars? What would Windblade look like in G1? This, to me, seems like a viable way to reimagine the characters that we all love and translate them to different forms that we may not expect in order to rejuvenate interest in the line after most of us have our certain boxes checked. Iron Factory seems to be doing an IDW Legends collection. What would DevCon look like in IDW? And then how would that translate to a Legend-scaled figure? Knockout from Transformers Prime as part of G1... What would Rat Trap look like in Transformers Animated, etc., etc.? It starts to get pretty interesting. There's a lot of characters that I think people that are fans of one particular element of this franchise in terms of time appreciate on a broader scale, or could appreciate on a broader scale, if they were given the opportunity. So this was brought to my attention by a friend of mine, a guy named Tyler, who I call Peanut, because his head is shaped, forget it. But he was very turned off by this, and I get the impression there are others that are turned off by this also. But this, to me, seems like the Bishojo approach. What would Freddy Krueger look like in anime as a female? You know, what would RC look like in this world? I think it's an interesting perspective to take. I think it's exciting. And while it may be a little too little, a little too late for me in regards to my Transformers collection, I can tell you if they did a character that I was absolutely in love with, the Stunicons the DJD collectively or individually, the Dinobots. I could see myself going in on a small little self-contained collection that was completely reimagined. It's not too far of a cry from the stuff the Fans Project was doing early on with a lot of their lines. Their Dinobots, Roadbuster, a lot of that stuff were characters that you knew, but they were definitely designed for that Fans Project world. And people bought in. And I don't see this as being much different. It's just a different world. So I wish this company the best. I'm excited to see what they have planned in the future. And I'm also excited for what stuff like this and this DX9 hot rod inspire other companies in the fandom to do and accept. It's always curious to me. Also, are we going to act like they didn't put RC front and center on every picture they put up? At the very least, that's pretty hardcore and I think we have to respect it. It's a bold move. <laughs> 
and I respect the hardcore. So anyway, that's the only reason why I wanted to touch on this stuff. I didn't want to take up too much of your time, but I thought it was something interesting and worth talking about, so that's where we're at. Hope you guys are having a good week. I'm probably doing fine. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.